Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Manuel Quintana with Pragmatic Works. And today in this video, I'm going to take the time to talk to you about Fabric's real time intelligence event houses. Right? So there's a lot with Fabric. We have lots of other content and other videos out there around Fabric. So make sure you check that out. Here we're going to take a very narrow, focused look at the what's called an event house, which falls under that fabric workload of real time intelligence. It's received quite a few updates. It became officially GA in the large event that was in Sweden back in September. So it's here. It's available. There are some elements still that are in preview, but it's a really new, exciting element as well with the upcoming availability of a real time intelligence in a day event. Just one more official Microsoft class that's going to be available for you to sign up for. Of course, we as partners with Microsoft will be delivering these classes. It's an exciting way to kind of learn and examine what other elements of fabric could you potentially be taking advantage of as an organization if you haven't already gone down this route. So the purpose and intention, of course, for this video is just to get your feet wet, to understand a little bit what the event house is really all about, what kind of considerations you should be having around the sources. And we're just going to take a quick little tour around the event house using a sample data set as well. Keep an eye out for some future videos because we're going to extend this example with an idea of kind of, well, how do we populate this, right? How do we get data once we create an event house? How can we get data that we have available to us into these actual we're going to find out and learn about our KQL databases? So that will be an upcoming in an upcoming session, an upcoming video that you can watch and observe. So. With that being said, let's start today off by just having a little bit of conversation around the event house itself. So once again, you're going to find this when you go and explore the various different workloads that are available to you within Fabric. Real time intelligence had a nice little icon change. You may have noticed that the data activator kind of left as being an individual selection. It's basically been folded into real time intelligence. The icon effectively has remained the same, but it now has that red color basically taken from data activators, kind of those two worlds coming together. But when we look at real time intelligence, when we look at this idea of an event house, right within the grand scheme of fabric, this is going to give us a way primarily to focus on what's called event driven or like data in motion, right? Real time data itself. Sometimes we refer to it as event driven data, right? Kind of uh, kind of comparing it to your traditional, what you'd find like in your relational database structures, sometimes referred to as just kind of time oriented data where it's just kind of um, schedule based updates and refreshes more transactional and OLEP scenarios. Here we're talking about streaming data, data in motion. That's really what has been that's what this event house and this whole real time intelligence workload has kind of been built from the ground up to support, to support these sources, to get us that ability of basically being able to act on this data immediately, quickly, efficiently, really giving us as an organization a competitive edge in that decision making process because we can react and because we can look at that information just so readily and just so quickly. It's extremely performant, right? And something that's really cool and interesting, which might not be an immediate skill set here, is definitely going to be that KQL language, which also will have a future video that goes a little bit more involved in that. We're talking about the Kusto query language. But because this is a service that's built from the ground up to handle real time intelligence, its throughput for ingestion is extremely performant. We're talking about working, of course, at petabyte scales. Yes, yes, absolutely driven more towards that data in motion, that event driven kind of information. But you can use this for traditional sources as well. You do have the opportunities through things like data flows and pipelines to get data from those processes into a KQL database. And there are definitely going to be circumstances where this will make sense as you're going to have a lot of your streaming data. But you may also have some referential tables that you want to correlate with that also. And at the same time, even though this is its own thing, right, we have a lake house, we have a warehouse in fabric. Now, this is being an event house, basically a container that contains our KQL databases, which will have our tables with streaming data going into it. It's still, as you can imagine, seamlessly integrated with the rest of fabric through the form of one lake integration, something you do have to kind of enable. We'll see when we utilize the sample data set will automatically be turned on, but we'll look at it. We'll talk about it. But this is how we can take advantage of things like shortcuts which really is what brings one lake to life, allowing us across the organization to make sure that we can share the data that we have available with anyone we need to grant access to that reducing redundant data set. That's one of those big aspects and elements around there, right? So a lot of benefits here, right? So this ability of really tapping in, 
to these you know sources that have data in motion we have a wide range of sources available to us we are going to have a follow-up video to this session in which we're going to explore effectively etl what is available to us within real-time intelligence to be able to connect to sources potentially transform it and then load or land that data into our kql databases so we'll have a whole video focused around that keep your eye out for it it's going to be focused around what are called event streams we'll see it briefly today because it's going to be part of the sample package that we're going to be looking at right there's also the other ETL options within Fabric, which is going to be pipelines and data flows. It may be included in that future video, but there's other content that you can look at. At the end of the day, it's really just a choice of the destination in there. So we have a wide range of capability of what we can connect to organically and then through other ETL options as well. Because of the real time nature of it, the ability of acting quickly on this, these decisions will be at your fingertips. And of course, by combining this with the rest of what the Fabric ecosystem offers us, we can bring this more holistic view to the entire organization. We have something that's meant to handle those event driven data streams, as well as we have our other scenarios, which is going to be handling our more traditional kind of schedule based data here. And those worlds are going to be able to come together so we can get that holistic view. And that is going to allow us to really demystify that decision making process and be able to answer the questions on a daily basis to make sure we're moving in that right directions, right? Making, uh, getting that edge, making those right choices, moving the business, moving that needle in the right direction. That's the whole purpose and intention around this. And like I said, we're gonna take a very cursory glance at this just so you can get a feel. I'll talk about how you can just create it. It's actually a very simple process, but in order to really kind of understand more what's going on here, we'll look at a sample element and I'll show you where you can kind of look at this for yourself. There's other examples you can leverage too if you wanna find something that falls more in line with your business and your organization, you'll see that that is available to you as well. So Fabric is an entire end-to-end -end analytical solution. And right at the beginning, there's many things that you're going to fall into with a degree of comfort, and that's where you're going to focus. But it's important to know what else is available to you. If you're already paying for fabric, right? If you're using capacity, this is here for you. It's waiting for you. So it's good to know and understand what, what its capabilities are. So once again, we're going to look at event houses. There are more parts to overall real-time intelligence, but it really starts with the event house itself, having that available, having at least one KQL database so we can start bringing in that streaming data. So let's go away from the actual PowerPoint itself. Let's kind of dive into the actual Fabric portal and let's check out what an event house is all about. Let me go ahead and leave my PowerPoint. You can see I'm in my browser of choice. I'm just in Chrome. I've gone to um, you know app.powerbi.com, fabric.microsoft.com. There's like tons of ways to get here. We're just in the Fabric or the Power BI portal. In order to move forward with this, as you can imagine, you do need some Fabric capacity, right? You need some form of method to create Fabric artifacts. We have a whole um, video YouTube around licensing, but in this regard, you can see I already have a workspace here and it is premium enabled. So this is allowing for the creation of Fabric artifacts. And at the time of this recording, there's only three options that you have to use for a license type for a workspace so that you can move forward here. That would be a fabric trial, a P or premium capacity, a P SKU, or a fabric capacity, which is an F SKU. You'll need one of those three, have a workspace that's leveraging that type of a licensing um, scenario in order to create this, right? So like I said, if you want more details around licensing, definitely check out that video. Um, we're not going to kind of focus on that piece, right? This is meant kind of that you know already how to do this. So I have a workspace. Here it is ready to go to use Fabric. Now, once you kind of get familiar with it, you just need to create an event house. You, of course, can just go to new item, just create an event house right here and off to the races you go. Literally, this is all it takes. You can go in and I'll just do a quick, I'll just say this is our test event house just so we can see this, right? Got to can't have spaces in there. We put that in there. And uh, we'll just do this real quick so you can see how fast and easy it is. This effectively creates us a blank event house. It's going to have a blank KQL database. And this comes with as well a default, what's called KQL query set. We're going to go through this example very fast because it'll be a little bit better for us to look at this when we actually have like a table, let's say. We'll use that with a sample. Once you launch this for the first time, it kind of takes you through a tour. It says, hey, go here, start by adding data. You've got a blank database here. Go ahead and hit get data. You can manually add tables. You can see that we also have the ability of just hit the plus sign. There's another database that we can create. You can see for, this is a system overview. So how much storage is being taken up across the board for all of the databases that we have available? That's what this will showcase. You can, of course, dive into specific databases to get those specific metrics. But this is a system overview page, which gives you a lot of insightful information. The usage of resources, how much activity, the top users you can see, lots of different things in play here. But 
We've got an empty database, but no actual data inside of it. So in this case, I think we'll kind of leave this example where it is. What I'll do is I'm going to exit out of this view. It brings me back to the workspace and you can see it's created exactly what I mentioned. You have the event house itself as the top level artifact. And then within it, we have our first, which was this default KQL database that was created as well as a query set. Let's go ahead though and look at this. So there's actually a sample. So to do this, what we're going to do is you have a couple of options. You can either go here to workloads. This is kind of a newer experience where you can go to real time intelligence and you can definitely tap into the samples right here. You also can go down in the persona switcher on the bottom left corner and go to real time intelligence. You'll see that these options that you find here are basically the same. Um, when you go into the persona switcher here, though, you have direct access to creating the objects. The other one is more kind of documentation and samples, as you can see right here. So either way, if you hit this option, which is explore real time intelligence sample, this is kind of a full example, a full package, if you will. It's going to have an event house. It's going to have an, a, an actual KQL database. It's going to have a query set. It's actually going to create a semantic model, a Power BI report, a real time intelligence dashboard and an event string everything if you want to take the time and kind of reverse engineer these elements. If you're looking for something pretty specific, you can go to this explore a sample and it gives you a couple of different choices to pick from. Um, if something maybe lines up, it doesn't have a full fledged package like the one we're going to look at. As you can see, it comes with an event house, a KQL database and a query set. Pretty much every one of these falls in that line. It doesn't add the RTI dashboard. It doesn't add in the, uh, the um, event stream or the actual semantic model and the Power BI report. But that's there. If you want to explore it, it is available to you. But I'm going to go ahead and choose this option here, which is let's open up the full sample. So it does take a moment here where it's going to go ahead and literally make that connection. And it's going to add a lot of different artifacts into the actual workspace itself. And once it's all said and done, it will launch us directly into the event house with a KQL database with a single table there that is being managed by an event stream, right? This is the, the tool that is being used to connect to the source and stream that into the destination table in our newly created event house. And like I said, in a future video, we'll be looking at that, right? We'll look at the event stream. We'll look at what sources are available to us and we'll play in that space. Don't forget, you're going to have an opportunity in the future here to sign up for an actual real time intelligence in a day event and get a full hands on day experience connecting to streaming data. Maybe this isn't a world that your organization is a part of right now. You have your more traditional kind of event. Uh, you're more like schedule based data that you find in traditional transactional systems like on prem SQL, Azure SQL DB. Maybe you haven't gone into that space and you know you're considering it. Well, let's get more familiar with the tools that will support that, right? Sample is ready. Sample's good to go. So if we go here, we can say it's in, hey, look at all this fun stuff we did. A couple links to the documentation related to real time dashboards, query sets, event streams. If you want, click on those. That'll launch you into those areas. We're just going to go ahead and hit explore. And we have not the exact same view that we saw before when I created that blank test event house, because this is actually focusing and clicked on the database. Remember, I mentioned you have a system overview, which is right here. This actually is that same view, but now it has more details because we actually have data, right? Only one database, so pretty minimal here. But you can see the details. You can see it only has my user credentials as this would be something that we part of a workspace where there's other users we're giving access to that obviously will be populated with more names. But as mentioned, you can go into the database itself and you can see the specifics and see the, the data activity tracker right per day. How are we looking at the number of rows that are being loaded? This is a live view. If we go into actual bike stream, we are seeing the data is just streaming in and this will kind of update in its own regard. So this is how you can view it. You can, of course, expand out your actual table itself to see the respective schema. There is an actual schema insights, which does break this down. Also column names, data types. So you can see that information just here. So in this little overview, it's very effective, right? And as mentioned, there is a stream that's in play here. So bringing that data in that is made visible to us as well. So very easy to navigate, very easy to interact with. Uh, we do have the ability also to query this data, right? Now this sample data set does come with a standalone KQL query set, but every single basically element that we get in here that you go into, you can go into a table and there's this option query with code. This will always bring up kind of a default display so you can show any 100 records and it'll bring up a KQL query set. Look, it's just bringing you back to the sample one and it's doing this take statement, right? If you're unfamiliar with KQL, this will be a little bit awkward, but it is going to be a language we're going to look into in a future video. Very effective video. And to be honest, I really like the syntax and how it's written as kind of feels like organic, right? Um, sometimes I feel a little funky with the like SQL where you put a select statement and then the from 
but as we all know, the from statements was actually being executed first. Here, that's what you do. You start with the table you're interested in and you write the rest of your syntax underneath. So this is effectively doing a top 100 from my bike stream. You can see the details right there. There is a default kind of tab here. You can see some counts and stuff like that. So you can explore this. There's some links to some helpful like cheat sheets and KQL guides. Feel free to explore that. But the event house is pretty self-contained, allowing you to very easily, once again, create databases. Once you're in an actual database itself, very simple to create tables in the mix. So you can see, do we want to go ahead and connect with data using either a local file? Do you want to connect to one lake? Do you want to go to an external Azure storage? These are effectively shortcuts, right? Do you want to use um, an actual event stream that's going to be covered in a future one? Do you want to use a data pipeline? Do you want to use a data flow? You can see it's providing us ways how you're you're on the you're on the actual database. How would you like to populate this? Right. So it gives us that capability. If we click on the table, we can go through and we can create another query set, another real time dashboard. Right. We have these capabilities. Do I want to create another table manually? It's a very nice self-contained element here that is going to house any and all of your KQL databases, the respective tables, which in the end of the day is going to be your streaming data. So it's nice, clean and easy, definitely a nice interface to work with. I recommend maybe checking out some of the samples and uh, some of the other verticals, like the other industries, so you can explore something maybe more familiar to yourself. But this just kind of gets you going, like I said. Now, obviously, the next piece of this process is, well, I have data. It exists in this source. What's available to me? So if you did want to explore that for yourself, you can go right here. Go in and choose the actual option for get data. Choose an event stream option and go new. That'll bring you to a UI where you can see all the different connectors. So we're not going to cover it in this session, but it will be in a future video. We'll take a nice introductory look to event streams and how we can connect to that data itself. We'll just use a very simple, basic example. That exactly is what we want to go through today. Just a very quick scenario, knowing what event house is all about, as you can see, very easy to curate and it will be where you house your tables. There's other things of consideration that you might be able to go into. There are some more administrative aspects to this on like kind of deciding, well, do we want to dedicate minimum resources to this? You know, this will be available and visible inside of the capacity metrics app. So you can see what's going on in there. Uh, but it is a very performance system. It is included with that capacity that you're already going to be paying for. So in those scenarios, and it can be used once again, not necessarily for just data in motion, not just event based data, just streaming elements. Like I said, you can see you can bring data in from pipelines and data flows that you might want to merge together with this more event oriented data itself. So hopefully you feel good. You have a little bit better understanding of what the event house is all about, right? That's an important aspect of it. And then thinking about it, what, you know, when we think about what other sources are you using? Maybe you were unaware of the event house. Maybe you were. What streaming sources are you finding more popular you're getting into? What examples do you have maybe where you've already started to use this very, probably the newest element of Fabric to success? Give us some examples, or if you have some questions around it, bring them into the chat. We can look at it and discuss it. And once again, make sure you're paying attention for in the future to sign up for your own real-time intelligence in a day event officially hosted through Microsoft. And we also will have a pre-recorded version of that on our on-demand learning meant to mimic that class so that you can take that kind of at a your own pace, if you will. But do remember, like every single other fabric artifact that exists, this is definitely prone to changes, right? The UI has changed greatly within the last couple months. I assume it's going to keep changing through. We have a large event coming up in March slash April, right? The end of March there, um, Fabcon, Fabricon. And I imagine there's going to be some changes there as well. But this gives you that good foundation, the idea of what this is meant to do and support for you, that's not going to change. Maybe how the UI interacts and how we get to certain areas will, but the overall terminology, the idea of the event house, that will retain itself. So hopefully with all that, like I said, you feel a little bit better about real-time intelligence, the usage of event house. Remember, the event house is just one aspect of what we do within real-time intelligence. We'll need to look forward at things like event streams so we can be in charge of bringing the data in. As always, hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one.